Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Late Night Talk with me, your host, Ahmed Ali. And once again, we have entered the month which teaches us many lessons such as bravery, loyalty, sacrifice, and how to care for one another, how to sacrifice our own selves for a perfect cause, like we'll get to touch upon these 10 or 13 nights of Muharram. Now and tonight is the first night prior to Muharram. And honestly, one of the saddest nights is to enter a month which not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was struck by the enemies of Allah, but millions of Muslims around the world commemorate these nights with sorrow, with lamentation, and remembering the sacrifices that were offered in this month. Tonight, we have our very special guest, Sheikh Abbas Panju joining us tonight live from the holy city of Karbala. Sheikh, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Allah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala great in your reward uh, for entering the month of Muharram, uh, the month which actually breaks the heart. Without doubt. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Inna li katli al Hussein harara tan fi kulub al mu'minina la tabrudu abada. The Holy Prophet of Islam says that indeed for the killing of Imam al Hussein, there is a burning heat within the hearts of the mu'minin, within the hearts of the believers that can never be extinguished. And tonight as we welcome or as we receive the new moon commemorating the beginning of Shah Muharram, yes. you find that millions of people from across Iraq, millions of people from across the globe, as our viewers can see, have gathered here tonight yes. to pledge allegiance to the master of martyrs, Sayyid al-Shuhada Aba Abdullah al Hussein, yes. and to begin this ceremony of commemorating his martyrdom. Mm -hmm. And year after year, you see the crowds and the number of people across the globe becoming more and more when it comes to marking the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein. Yeah, it actually looks like Tarbain. Without well, doubt. I'm right here, you know, I wish the viewers can see what I'm looking at right now. Um, it, it legit looks like Arba'in. 100%. And subhanAllah, you will find that despite the tragedy occurring almost 1400 years ago, yeah. you find that this is a tragedy, its commemoration has defied all the odds. It's still fresh. Human history. Ahshantu. You look at majority of, or you look at any revolution that has taken place in human history. Yes. Its memory may exist a couple of years, a couple of decades, a couple of centuries. Yes. It might be recorded within textbooks or books of history, mm -hmm. but an event coming to life at this magnitude, yeah. such that every year on the day of Ashura, it is not like as if Imam al Hussein was sacrificed in 61 AH. It's not like as if he was beheaded back in history. But today, this year, on this day, at this time, it is as yeah. if the martyrdom is occurring yes. and you find that despite all the odds, number one nature, that yes. people forget history is tend to, is, there is a tendency that history is forgotten or mm -hmm. if it is commemorated, it is not commemorate, commemorated with so much zeal and with so much fervor. Mm -hmm. Yet you find Imam al Hussein is an exception. This is on one side. Yeah. On the other hand, yes. the world, the entire dunya has been against the commemoration of Imam al Hussein. Yeah, centuries after centuries. Dictator after dictator, yeah. from 61 age till today. Yeah. They have tried their utmost. Governments, empires have gotten together to obliterate the yeah. memory of Imam al Hussein. Yet you find Imam al Hussein stands against the they odds. They can't, they can't. In fact, Habibi Ahmed, the more they try to obliterate the remembrance of Imam al Hussein, the stronger it the becomes. The more it grows. The more it grows. I mean, and, and we do apologize for the noises coming from outside, uh, but tonight, Sheikhna, uh, is the banner exchange ceremony uh, where soon uh, the, the, I believe, yeah, it hasn't changed yet uh, for Imam Hussein and Al Hadar Abbas, but soon, uh, if we can get cameras, Sheikhna, if you look over there, you can see the green lights changing to red lights. Uh, they just changed right now. Um, and soon it will come to Abu al Fadl Abbas and it will be uh, changed as well because as you know red is the color of blood and which you know was spilled uh, in this land. Absolutely. You see the marking, the 
ceremony of changing the flag in itself is very symbolic in regards to our faith. Yes. Not only does it commemorate the official period that marks the beginning of the morning, morning ceremonies. Yes. But in addition to that, you see, this red flag that is raised over the Qubba, over the dome of Imam al Hussein, is supposed to mark the fact that the person who's been martyred over here, no one has yet come to take his vengeance. Mm -hmm. And he will be avenged by that awaited Mahdi, Abdullah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Yes. And the fact that this flag is changed from red to black, black the universal color of grief. Of sadness, yeah. This is the revival of these days where we live through the tragedy of Karbala day by day. You'll find lovers of Ahlul Bayt, they live through this tragedy. And the fact that the environment is changed, the lights are red, this is to show you that this was a divine battleground. Karbala, this is the land of freedom. Yes. Karbala, the land of tears. Karbala, the land of grief. Karbala, the land of Tawheed. And when you find the changing of the flag and the changing of the lights, the person who comes to Karbala realizes and he senses this from the very bottom of his soul yes. that this was a battleground yes. in which the most epic battle between Haq and Batil took place. Yeah. Every step of this, every inch of this land of Karbala is a land which is divine, is yes. a land which is Muqaddas. Mm -hmm. You find Mu'mineen, they come and you find them weeping Bain al Haramain. Yeah. You look right, you look left, and you, you can't help but sit back and think perhaps this is where the blood of Abu al Fadl was spilled. Yes. This is perhaps where there were traces of blood of Hor or Habib ibn Madahir. Yeah a place that is marked with so much grief and this grief has a spiritual power mm -hmm. that is able to shake the thrones of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, I mean and what's beautiful about it is uh, you know in military they salute uh, once uh, a martyr goes by uh, but in Muharram as you can hear Shaykhna and the viewers can hear it uh, they're saluting the flag that's going up they're saluting the individuals that are buried in, in these shrines uh, and you know trumpets are going off and uh, you know the, 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 the military music uh, and, and they, they, they just changed the, the flag Sheikh if you look at the shrine of Imam Hussain they just changed the flag of Imam Hussain uh, and uh, you know it's, um, it's, it's really sad uh, to get uh, to the stage of Muharram Sheikh wouldn't you agree because honestly uh, Muharram is a month where fighting is forbidden absolutely Yet we see, you know, not just any regular individual being killed, right. uh, you know, or you know, being shot with an arrow and killed. No, no, no. We see to the full extent of, of savagery, of uncivilization, of, of, of savagery that, you know, beheaded the greatest individual ever to walk this planet. Absolutely. When you look at the manner in which this war was conducted, these are so-called Muslims who violated the sanctity of a month which even the Juhala during the days of Jahiliyyah yeah. used to revere this month. Yes. People who are atheists, people who are polytheists used to respect the sanctity of this month. Wow. Subhanallah, half a century or so later, you have Muslims who say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, who say, Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah behead the grandson of the Prophet within these sacred months. Oh, wow. And you know, you mentioned this war that took place. It was a full-scale war in which there wasn't a single war crime except that it was committed. Not a yeah. single atrocity, even yeah. if you look at conventional rules of war that are stipulated today by non-Muslims, even according to their standards, what was done to Imam al Hussein surpasses everything. Horrific in terms of war crimes that were created that were that were uh, carried out in that not only is a fallen soldier beheaded but his body mutilated yeah. his his body trampled by horses yeah. and if you just think about the brutality yeah. involved within this there is no human being who has yeah. truly a heart 
a heart bear, through yeah. which is considered to be a human mm. being except that he he sheds tears yeah. he cries rivers for for yeah. the for the atrocities that mm -hmm. were committed here in Karbala mm -hmm. now Sheikh, we'll come back to the discussion but uh, since the flag of Mohsen went to black uh, not far inshallah we'll see the flag of Abdul Fadl Abbas also changing uh, to black as well now can you comment on what's going on uh, your 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 emotions your your feelings uh, of uh, you know of what's going on in Karbala Habibi Ahmed, this is perhaps one of the most difficult questions to ask. Mm -hmm. When you hear the trumpets blowing mm -hmm. and you hear the Latmiya being recited mm -hmm. and tribute being paid to say the Shuhada, this for us is a pledge of loyalty. Yes. This for us is a pledge of allegiance. Yes. This flag change is not the change of any normal flag just from red to black. This is a flag that represents Tawheed. This mm. is a flag that represents the entire teachings of Islam. This is a flag that represents the oppression of Ahlul Bayt. Mm. This is a flag that represents the superiority of Ahlul Bayt. Habibi Ahmed, this is a flag that represents our identity. Mm. In what or, way, Sheikh? In tell terms us. of when Imam al Hussein came here to Karbala, each army was recognized through the flag that they bore. And okay. you find that. The flag in, in uh, traditional warfare, when you go down through history, the flag of an army represented the values for which they stood up for. Mm -hmm. Which is why you will find that even during the time of Rasulullah, he was very particular about the flag. We have the flag that he used on the day of Badr, was a flag that was used by Amirul Mu'mineen on the day of Jamal and on the day of Sifwid. And after that it was used in Karbala and is not been used again until the Dhuhr of the 12th Imam. So that flag yes. has a divinity attached to it mm -hmm. in regards to what it represents. Wow. The army that is holding up this flag is an army that upholds the true religion of Allah. Yes. When I look at this flag, I see within it humanity. Yes. When I look at this flag, I see within it submission to Allah subhanahu yes. wa ta'ala. When I look at this flag, mm -hmm. I look at honor. Yes. And hence the flag represents the values, the values of Islam. The prophecy of Rasulullah uh, attesting to his prophethood, yes. attesting to the oneness of God. Yes. And the Mushrikeen had their flags as well. Their flags represented that they, or their flags stood to represent the fact that they are from the side of the polytheists and that they are from the side of Kufr and that mm -hmm. they are from the side of Shirk and Fisk mm -hmm. and Fasad. Mm -hmm. And the same thing when Imam al Hussein came here, this flag, you see, the flag, if you look at any country today, Every country has its flag yeah. and you'll find that even institutions or organizations yes. have their own flags. Yes. These flags have colors. These colors represent certain values within them. Yes. Symbols. So they symbolize values that that nation upholds to, yes. for, to a certain extent. And similarly when it comes to Islam, everything that Imam al Hussein stood up for is represented within this flag. Which is why you find that when Abu al-Fadil went into the battleground, why was he so reluctant for this flag to fall down? Such that, as you know, the Arbab al makatil say, when both his arms were severed, he held on to the flag with what was remaining from his arms against his chest. Ya Abu al-Fadil, it's a flag, it's a piece of cloth. It could fall and you could go and hasten towards the tents and get the water to the children. But no, Abu al-Fadil held this flag high. Why? Because this flag represents Islam. This flag represents Rasulullah. Yes. This flag represents Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib and his wilayah. Yes. And hence, for us, this changing of this flag ceremony, this flag ceremony represents everything that we stand for mm -hmm. over here. The fact that we display it in our Husseinias, the, yes. f the fact that we display these flags in our homes. In the Atabat over here, it's a show of our loyalty towards this flag. Definitely. Just like how you have in today's culture, people who put up the American flag or the British flag or the Canadian flag, it's a sign of patriotism. Yes. Why? Because they are loyal and they, they adhere to, this, to the laws of the land. They have a love towards this yes. land. It's represented within the flag. Mm -hmm. And the same thing when it comes to Islam. Mm -hmm. For us, it's this loyalty and this affiliation yes. that we're looking towards. Mm -hmm. Now this raises a question. Uh, I know we'll get to Abu Fadl Abbas uh, in the seventh night, inshallah. Sure. Uh, but as you mentioned, it's, it's, it's a divine flag carried by Prophet Muhammad, Imam Ali, and then later on uh, in Karbala by Hussein. But why did Imam Hussein not carry it himself and give it to Abu Fadl? 
I mean, does it not raise a bit of question as in, you know, why wasn't responsibility put on Al Hussein and then Tabul Fadl Abbas? Sure. When we look into the ranks, when you come into the world of uh, warfare or even military formation, you find that you have one person, the general within the army, the flag bearer, mm -hmm. the commander of that army. You have a leader on one hand and then you have the commander. Just like the way during the time of Rasulullah. Rasulullah is the embodiment and the representative, the representative, the ultimate representative of Islam. But when you find when he goes into war, he gives the banner to Abu Al uh, to Amir al Mu'minin. Yes. Salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi. Therefore, the flag bearer is that central person within the army appointed by the head of the army who is the most steadfast person around whom the entire formation of the army revolves around. Yes. His strength represents the strength of the army. Yes. And uh, hence, this is a position that is given by the leader, be it at the time of Rasulullah when he gave it to Amir al muminin or at the time of Imam al Hussein when he gave it to Abu al fadil mm -hmm. And you find how there is a relationship over here yes. in that Abu al-Fadil, the son of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Amir al-Mu'mineen was the flag bearer of Rasulullah. Abu al-Fadil, his son, is the flag bearer of Imam al-Hussein. And Rasulullah says, Husseinu minni wa ana min al Hussein." The position of Imam al-Hussein like the position of Rasulullah. And the position of Abu al-Fadil like the position of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ya'ni, the person who is most, most steadfast, most staunch, in terms of representing these beliefs and defending these beliefs is given the flag. Wow, that's beautiful. I mean, uh, right now, you know, I, I, we stand and in, 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 we're amazed by what's going on right now, Sheikh uh, because the flag is changing uh, very soon. Uh, and you hear everyone uh, chanting the name Hussein in millions. Uh, you know, across the year, we don't hear that. Sheikh I have goosebumps just listening to the to the cries, Ya Hussein, from yeah. within the mics and yeah. from the people themselves. Yes. And this is this pledge of allegiance. It is when these people cry out, Ya Hussein, and when this flag is raised up, this is their way of saying, Abad Wallah Ya Zahra Maninsa Hussein. Which will they will chant very which soon. Which they will chant very soon. Yeah. And they were chanting even before Salatul Maghrib. Yeah. I mean, coming from Najaf al Ashraf to Karbala, you see the millions of people that are here at this shout ya hussein our pledge of allegiance ya abba abdullah even though we were not there in karbala with you on the 61st of ah here we are today and we ensure that we will uphold your martyrdom the commemoration of your martyrdom yes. we will weep for you and we will revive your sacrifice and the values for which you sacrificed your life yes. this is our pledge of allegiance to you mm -hmm. and in reality this is what you see today. Mm -hmm. Millions of people over here, whether they are here on Karbala yes. or wherever they are in the world through this channel, Mubaraka, insha'Allah, oh. people pledging their allegiance through their, their TV screens. Yes. This is what they're doing. We have come here on this night of Muharram. We are living this journey with Imam Al Hussein. We are here to pledge our allegiance to him, the master, mm -hmm. and this is the commemoration of the ceremonies. Mm -hmm. People who are perhaps double minded of participating within Aza, participating in Majalis, serving Imam al Hussein in any way possible. When they see scenarios such as these, when they see the world coming together, Habibi Ahmed, it wakes you up. It does. From this sort it of does. ghafla throughout the year, yeah. we are attacked with sins and we are subdued in, in this worldly life and we are drowned in materialism and in consumerism. But this call, Ya Hussein, this flag change of red to black Works awakens the soul yes. and it brings us towards yes. that which is reality, mm -hmm. Imam al Hussein mm -hmm. and Deen. And what's beautiful about uh, what you just said right now, you know, across the year uh, we're having fun and whatsoever, but when it comes to Ramadan, there's a different vibe Absolutely. You know, of discipline. And when it comes to Muharram, your soul actually awakens, as you just mentioned, uh, by the chant, Ya Hussein. Now, you began tonight's uh, episode uh, with a very important narration by Prophet Muhammad, uh, where, you know, th th there's a flame burning within the hearts of the believers uh, for Imam Hussein. It won't be extinguished until the Day of Judgment. Sure. Uh, now, 
is that the only motive that brings everyone together like this or is there a specific motive higher than that that you know what everyone across the year year after year come to the same place the same everything you know the same ceremony has been there for 10 years you know probably the same people come every year right. you know from different countries is that the only motive that brings everyone together on the ban of Hussein? when we look into the world of traditions you will find that in reality Ahmed this occurrence this gathering of the people over here is divinely decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is from the decree of God that Karbala will be revived in this manner with this fervor every year from the time of his martyrdom until Yomul Qiyamah you have that this in essence is the actualization of the supplication of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam. And we have traditions to go along these lines. Yes. So for example, you have within Biharul Anwar, yes. which volume 44, Alam al Majlisi Rahmatullah Alayhi, yes. went through this great effort in compiling an encyclopedia of traditions, traditions that were long lost. He went out and revived them out of his way. If Allah gives us tawfiq, inshallah. We can have a Inshallah. particular episode just on Alama Majlisi and his journey of compiling yep. Biharul Anwar. Yes. An encyclopedia, there is no second one, to one it. One of the greatest today, scholars. Without doubt. In volume 44, yes. he mentions this narration on authority of the Holy Prophet of Islam. When he's having a conversation with his daughter, Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra, he says, the tradition goes, أَنَّهُ لَمَّا أَخْبَرَ فَاطِمَا عَلَيْهَا السَّلَامِ بِكَتْلِ وَلَدِهَا الْحُسَيْنِ وَمَا يَجْرِ عَلَيْ مِنَ الْمِحَنِ بَكَتْ فَاطِمَا بُكَاءً شَدِيدًا When Rasulullah informed Sayyidah Fatima mm -hmm. of the tragedies, the trials of the tribulations that would fall upon Imam Al-Husayn, yes. Sayyidah Fatima began to weep. She began to weep bitterly. بُكَاءً شَدِيدًا وَقَالَتْ Excuse me. Yes. يَا أَبَتَا she said, Oh my father, when will this happen? The killing of Imam al Hussein. He replies by saying, Fi zamanin khali minni wa minki wa min Ali. He says, It will happen at a time where I, yourself, and Ali will not even be present. The narration says, Fashtadda buka'uha. So her weeping became even more intense. Wakalat. She asked, She said to her father, Ya abata, faman yabki. وَمَنْ يَلْتَزِمْ بِإِقَامَةِ الْعَزَى لَهُ Look at the concern of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. He says, if I'm not there, Ali is not there, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, Imam Hassan is not there, you are not there, then who is going to weep over Imam al-Husayn? Wow. وَمَنْ يَلْتَزِمْ بِإِقَامَةِ الْعَزَى يَلْتَزِمْ Who is going to be compliant? Wow. Compliant with the revival and upholding the azan, the weeping ceremonies of Imam al Hussein. Wow, like we have today. Like we have today. Ahsantum, Fakala Nabi Ya Fatima, Inna Nisa a Ummati Yabkuna ala Nisa i Ahli Baiti, Wa Rijala Hum Yabkuna ala Rijali Ahli Baiti, Wa Yujadiduna al Aza Jilan Ba'da Jil fi Kulli Sana. Wow. Fi Kulli Sana. Rasulullah says, O Fatima, do not worry. There is going to be a generation of men and women. Their women will weep the women of our Ahlul Bayt. Their men will weep the men of, from our Ahlul Bayt. Generation after generation. Wow. Yani Rasulullah's supplication, his promise to Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam, that every year until the day of judgment, there will be men and women who will be compliant, yaltazimun, wow. yani iltizam, to yeah. be compliant, to be disciplined in terms of organization, in terms of logistics, all that that you see here today. Beautiful. Millions of people, this requires logistics. It does. Changing of the flags and the trumpets and the marching ceremony between Bain al Haramain, organization, compliance. People leave their work. People, look at the, in this baking heat, they have come with their little children. Yeah. They experience the heat, they cry, they remember Abu al-Fadil, they remember Ali ibn al-Akbar. Yes. This is divinely decreed. This was the supplication of Rasulullah to Allah. Mm -hmm. This was a promise of Rasulullah to Fatima. And you find that these people are the manifestation of the supplication of Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. In fact, more than that, we have a tradition 
on the 11th of Muharram. Yes. When all the Imam al Hussein and his companions are martyred, Imam Sajjad and the rest of the women are being taken as prisoners from Karbala to Kufa, as we will discuss as the nights go later on. Episodes, yeah. But you find that the narrations mention Imam Sajjad looked at the mutilated body of Imam al Hussein. And he was at the brink of death. Wow. He was at the brink of death. Say the Zainab notices the reaction of Imam Sajjad, Al Kubra, alayhi salam. And she says to him, Mali araka tajudu bi nafsik, ya bakiya tajaddi wa abi wa ikhwati. She says, The remainder of my brother, Yani the one who carries the yeah. traits and the essence and yeah. the message of my brother and my father. How is it that I see that you are your soul is struggling? Tajudu bi nafsik. This is an expression that is used when the soul is about to exit the body. Wow. This is the state of Imam Sajjad. She says, For wallah, inna hada la ahdum min Allah ila jaddika wa abik. وَلَكَدْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاكَ أُنَاسٍ لَا تَعْرِفُهُمْ فَرَائِنَةُ هَذِهِ الْأَرْضِ وَهُمْ مَعْرُوفُونَ فِي أَحْلِ السَّمَاوَاتِ She says to him that indeed this is a covenant from God that he has taken a pledge from people the Fir'auns of the dunya the tyrants and the oppressors of this world do not know them وَهُمْ مَعْرُوفُونَ فِي أَحْلِ السَّمَاوَاتِ these are people who are known in the angel in the in the heavens, in the heavens yeah. by the angels yes. by the prophets who are these people who are these people and this is these are people who are going to gather these mutilated bodies they are going to bury them yeah shuhada these are people who are going to establish an alam alam yani flag yeah if you take it yes. by literal, literal translation yeah. but the word alam over here means that they will make sure a sign a sign they will ensure that a sign is posted or a sign is constructed everything is done basically to ensure that the remembrance of your father, Sayyid al-Shuhada, is not obliterated. Like what we have right now. Ahshantum. So the alam means the kubba, the alam is the manara, the alam is Any the haram. Any sign that says Karbala. Everything and anything to do with the remembrance of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, according to our ulama and mufassirin, comes under the term alam. Wow. She says they are going to come together. They're going to revive the memory. What did she say? These are people who have taken, Allah has taken a pledge from them. In Alam al dar before we were created, before these millions of people were created. You see them over here, they are fulfilling this covenant that was taken from them by Allah. That's beautiful. That they would revive. And look at what Sayyidah Zainab goes on to say. La yudras atharuhu wa la yuhmarasmuhu. Not a single trace of Imam al Hussein shall be obliterated. Not a single memory of his shall be wiped out. With the passing of days and nights until the day of judgment, not a single trace of Karbala, not a single trace of Sayyidah Shuhada will be obliterated. Yeah. She goes on to say, وَلِيَجْتَهِدَنَّ أَئِمَّةَ الْكُفْرِ وَأَشْيَاءِ الدَّلَالِ فِي مَحْوِهِ وَتَتْمِيسِهِ فَلَا يَزْدَادْ أَثَرُهُ إِلَّا أُلُوًا Wow. The Imams of Kufr, the leaders of disbelief and those people who follow deviation they shall do everything and anything to try and obliterate or belittle Imam al Hussein. but Sayyidah Zainab says you know what with it's, all their efforts it's so increase. this will only increase wow. and Habibi Ahmad this is the manifestation of the promise of Sayyidah Zainab to Imam Sajjad wow. what you see here today her promise to Imam Zainul Abidin on the 11th of Muharram 61 AH, we see its signs today over yes. here. These are people whom Allah Azza wa Jalla as per Sayyidah Zainab's word and she's alima ghair mu'allama. And what's interesting about and astonishing at the same time is, you know, uh, Zainab alayhi salam, Lady Zainab, is actually telling her infallible nephew this. 
absolutely. You know, her, her nephew is not only infallible, but he's the Imam after Mount Hussein alayhi salam. <laughs> Yet Zainab has the, I mean, did Imam Sajjad know this? And was it, you know, concealed? Because we know stuff is concealed or not concealed from the sure. Imams of Ahl Bayt. Or was Zainab actually that knowledgeable to the extent that the Imam needed a reminder? There is no doubt that the Imam has knowledge of everything. So why was his soul that, you, you know, I, I know, you know, it's seeing your father being beheaded, uh, sure. but Zainab being the, the, the one who calms him down is just something this astonishing. This shows us if a ma'asum Imam gets to this level, it shows us the intensity of the atrocities that yes. were committed on one hand, and it shows us the greatness of the position of Zainab al-Kubra. Sayyidina Zainab al-Kubra Yani, it is through statements like this, when she is consoling a ma'asum imam, that we understand her darajah. Yeah. When we say Imam Sajjad attests to her infallibility. He does. Anti alima ghair mu'allama. You are, you are an alima, a scholar, but a scholar who was not taught by any other regular person. Wow. Yani, where did her ilm come from? Divine. Divinely sent ilm for Sayyidah Zainab al-Kubra. And this is what you see, her prophecy, where she, she manifests this reality for Imam Sajjad. Yes. You see all these people over here because of the pledge that was taken yeah. from them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, when you ask me this question, is there anything deeper behind this? I say to you that this commemoration of Imam al Hussein is divinely guided and watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Despite the odds, as we said earlier, look at the tyrants that have come, yeah. be it the Shah, be it Saddam, be it any other deviated ideological There's no worse than the thought. Abbasis. The Abbasids, look at what they did, the Umayyads. No, There's no. a time Imam, Imam Sajjad says there are not more than 20 people in the entire Hijaz who love us Ahlul Bayt. Wow. Yet today, look at the millions, millions, millions. of the commemorations. There was a time during the Abbasid period where people's limbs were severed as a way of tax for visiting Imam al Hussein. And from here we have this famous saying, along those lines. Yes. It emanated from at that time. Wow. Bani Abbas, Centuries Emperor, ago. Emperor, the strongest superpower on the earth at that time was not able to stop them. Wow. Even today, look at the suicide bombings that happen yeah. across the region. Despite this, you don't yeah. find people holding back yeah. because the tragedy of Imam al Hussein is divinely guided and divinely upheld within the, the Mashiatillah yes. that Imam al Hussein will be wept until the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. And for this reason, I say, Hanian, congratulations to each and every one person who has come here to weep Imam al Hussein. Mm -hmm. yes. Congratulations to the, our, our viewers across the globe who are going to participate in the commemoration of Imam al Hussein, uphold the commemoration of Imam al Hussein, even the one making chai in the kitchen, even the one who is sweeping the Husseiniyah, who is collecting the shoes in the parking lots, the volunteers of the centers, everything has been watched by the master over yes. here. And everything has been recorded as service towards the message of Imam al Hussein. Inshallah, inshallah. And th th there's one narration that I've heard uh, uh, along the lines of, you know, uh, since we're speaking about weeping, uh, we have uh, the, I just got news that the, the shrine, uh, the flag is about to go up uh, for Muhammad Abbas Ali Islam. It's not uh, black yet. Uh, but my question is regarding the narration um, that every creation weeps over Imam Hussein alayhi salam and, you know, remembers Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Yet we find that in al maqatil as your, your profession, uh, we see the creations not going with Imam al Hussein, trampling over his body, you know, uh, you know, creation, you know, not, you know, the rocks that were thrown and then blood was found under them weeping for Imam Hussein. Is that true? Is that, you know, is there a contradictory there or is that? Sure, it's a very good question. And there are a number of questions related to this in terms of understanding this issue. Number one is that how does the creation even weep? 
number one. Mm -hmm. Because we have traditions, the fish in the sea weep, the trees weep, the sun weeps, the moon weeps over mm -hmm. Imam al-Hussein. Everything within the kawn, everything within the realm of existence weeps for Imam al-Hussein. So we, number one, are there traditions in regards to this? Yes, there are traditions. Mm -hmm. Not only in books that are of the khasa of Shia mm -hmm. ulama, but you even have these traditions within the books of the Amma, mm -hmm. as we shall see within the forthcoming nights. Inshallah. Uh, ulama from the Amma have also narrated these uh, uh, occurrences. Yeah. And I'll narrate for you, I'll share for you one tradition um, mm -hmm. that is uh, granted to us again in Bihar al Anwar, volume yes. 45, and this mm -hmm. is a narration by Amir al Mu'mineen. Yes. Alayhi salam. Yeah. Uh, sorry to cut you off, Sheikhna. Sure. Uh, but they're changing the, the banner just now. Um, it's it's going to come down, the, the red one. Um, so uh, we're getting requests on Facebook and everywhere else uh, sure. for you to comment on uh, on what's going on right now and then we'll come back to the narration. Sure. Uh, sorry for that. Absolutely. Well, with the changing of the flag of Abu Fadl al-Abbas, you find that even the chronology in which the flags are changed, it marks it marks the relationship between Abu al-Fadl and Imam al-Hussein. You notice that the flag changed with Imam al-Hussein and then to Abu al-Fadl, showing that Abu al-Fadl second to Imam al-Hussein, Abu al-Fadl, his entire life was servitude to Imam al-Hussein, such that even if a flag is changed, out of having known Abu al-Fadl's sentiments to Imam al-Hussein, despite him being the flag bearer, you find that the flag of Imam al-Hussein is changed first. Because Abu al-Fadl did not do anything except that he kept Hussein first wow. in everything within his wow. life. And now when you come and you see the flag being changed over the, over the dome of Abu al-Fadl, this is something special. Beautiful. Yani, Sahib al-Raya Abu al-Fadl, Kamar Bani Hashim, this is that Abu al-Fadl, when the flag is being changed over the dome, mm -hmm. what comes to my mind and what comes to the minds of the millions of people, yes. it's that moment when Abu al-Fadl wanted to go into the battlefield after all the companions were martyred. And he says to his master, Imam al Hussein, that I wish to go into the battlefield. Imam al Hussein tearfully looks at Abu al-Fadl and he says to him, but you are the flag bearer of my army. This is at a time where all the companions were massacred. Wow. A person looks around and he says, There's but no there is left. no army. But do you know what? What? The Ma'asum Imam is pointing towards a reality. The Imam doesn't exaggerate. Abu al-Fadil himself was an army against the eyes of Bani, Ab wow. Bani Umayyah. Imam al Hussein says, You are the flag bearer of my army. As we yani, so long as Abbas is there, the army of Imam al Hussein is still there. So long as Abbas is on his feet, the enemies cannot even dare come close to the tents of the women. So long as Abu al Fadil is there, Zainab cannot be a slave, Zainab cannot be a prisoner. This is that Abbas who holds that flag, as we said in the beginning. His arms being severed, but this flag doesn't fall. When I look at this flag being changed over the dome of Abu al-Fadil, I need to pay allegiance to Imam al Hussein. I need to pay allegiance to Islam. I need to pay allegiance to Abu al-Fadil. And I need to say that these values of Islam, these values of Shiaism, which are contained within this flag, be it Salat, be it Shawm, be it Zakat, be it Amra bil Ma'roof, be it Nahyan al Munkar, be it wearing the right hijab, be it anything in regards when yes. I see this flag, everything that I lack in regards to Islam, I make amends, I make an oath, I make a promise that I'm going to try and better my life, Inshallah. that I'm going to follow the Sharia. Definitely to a greater extent as much that is possible. Yes. Ashadu annaka akamta salat. This flag represents salat. When the time of salat comes in, if I feel that I'm lazy, I look at this flag of Abu al-Fadil, I look at the sacrifice that Abu al-Fadil gave for this flag, for this deen, yeah. and I motivate myself to stand up in salat. Yes. Imam al-Hussein recited salat on the day of Ashura. When I'm lazy in salat, I remember this. And this is the flag being changed to black. Yes. Salaamu alaykum ya Mawlana ya Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Salaamu alaykum ya Ibn Amir al-Mu'minin. This is that Abu al-Fadl 
who carried the same traits and was given the same position by Imam al Hussein that Rasulullah gave to his Imam father, Ali. Amir al Mu'mineen. And you notice that the flag bearer, look at this position that was given to Amir al Mu'mineen. You understand from the day of Khaybar, he says, Rasulullah says, I will give this flyer, this, this banner to a person who is loved by Allah and his Prophet and who in turn loves Allah and his Prophet. And the same thing when it comes to Abu al-Fadil. There was, every one of the companions was exceptional. There is no man that has been born of the caliber as the companions of Imam al Hussein, without yes. doubt. But from amongst all of them, Abu al-Fadil stood out. You look at the tents within the Mukhayyam, you look at the, the orders of the tents, you find that in order to get to the tent of Sayyidah Zainab, to get to the tent of yeah. Imam al Hussein, you have to pass through the tent of Abu al Fadil. Wow. Yani Abu al Fadil was the defender, so the first line of defense. That's a nice observation. Such that even if the enemies were to penetrate the, through the tents, they would have to first come through the tent of Abbas. Wow. And who had, who did to, to have the courage the to stand in front of Abu al Fadil? Wow. Do you notice even in the narrations that when he went into the battlefield and he attacked them on his horse, as we will see during his maktal in his night, for in Kalabad, may manata hum may sara wa may sarata hum may mana. He, as he entered into the battlefield on his horse, ya akhi, he has not even raised his sword. Wow. His appearance, this haiba that was emanating from him. People looking at Abu al-Fadil, they saw death in front of them wow. and they dispersed. The Maktal says that the right wing dispersed onto the left and the left wing dispersed onto the right. In terms of warfare, this sort of disorganization shows the weakness of the army. Mm -hmm. It dismantled the right wing and the left wing without even using a sword. This is Abbas and this is the flag that has been changed when people look at this. This is what goes through their minds. Their tears come rolling down their cheeks, but at the same time, they have pride within them. This was my Imam. This was the, the, the second, this was the commander to the army of Imam al Hussein. This was Abu al Fadil. This is the source of inspiration. Any person who is going to change his life for the better, to become more compliant towards the religion, to become any person who is aspiring to be from amongst the Ashab and the Ansar of Imam al Hussein, their inspiration is Abu al Fadil. Wow. Their inspiration Beautiful. is Imam al Hussein. Beautiful. This is a place of not only allegiance, but this is a place of inspiration. Mm -hmm. When you see all the trials and the tribulations Abu al Fadil went to, but never gave up his loyalty towards the Imam, it motivates me. Reaching the water. To that extent, I mean, you know, to, to any individual, and Abbas, you know, he knew that he was brave. No one needed to tell him that he was brave, or, but yet his, his sense of humbleness, if you will, or his humility, you know, when he reached the water, he, he you know, he, he could have drank, and nothing would have happened to him. And no one would have blamed him. But this is... The that altruism. That, this sentiment within you that... So long as my Imam is thirsty, yeah. I can never quench my thirst. Yeah, and meaning what? The Imam's will, the Imam's desire comes or supersedes all personal interests. Wow. This is the lesson that you and I take home. In our daily lives, when we come across choices, be it at work, be it at school, be it at Husseiniyas, be it at anything, if my personal interest contradicts with the interest of religion, or in other words, I need to make a choice between my own benefit or upholding the values of the religion. Yes. I seek inspiration from Abu al Fadil. Yes. And Abu al Fadil, Qadi al Haja, Qadi al Hawaij. This is the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many millions of people come here at the door of Abu al Fadil? They ask for their desires. And with the grace of Abu al Fadil, these desires yeah. are fulfilled. These prayers, these supplications are answered. In every aspect of life, there is one person, a very, uh, a very dear brother to me in London, and he has visited Imam al-Hussein and Abu al-Fadil maybe three or four times in his life. 
This is you just uh, earlier you you mentioned that uh, that uh, the, the pilgrims uh, will be saying what Sheikhna? Abad Wallah ya Zahra ma ninsa Hussein. What does that mean? Abad Wallah, we swear to you, Ya Allah, by Allah, to paraphrase, we swear to you by Allah, by Allah we swear, O Zahra, that we shall never ever forget Imam Al Hussein. Wow. Yani, this is a promise that they are making to Sayyidah Fatima Al Zahra, and there is a reason. Why are they making this promise Why? to Sayyidah Fatima Al Zahra? We have a tradition. Okay. We have a tradition that it is by Imam Al uh, by Abi Abdullah alayhi salam, Imam Al Sadiq alayhi salam. Sadiq alayhi salam, yes. Mentioned in the text Mustadrak al Wasail, mm -hmm. he says, Wama min bakin yabkih. Yani, there is not a single person who weeps for him, Yani, for Imam al Hussein. Yes. Illa wakad wasala fatima alayha salam wa asadaha. Wow. He says that there is not a single person who weeps for Imam al Hussein, except that through this weeping, he has fortified the rights or he has fulfilled the rights of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam wa as'adaha he has brought happiness in her heart what does it mean to bring happiness in the heart of Fatima alayhi salam inna Allah yarda li ridati Fatima wa yagdab li ghadabiha Allah is pleased with the pleasure of Fatima and angered with the anger of Fatima when you sit and you shed this single tear, it streams down your cheeks. You have brought happiness to the heart of Fatima. To bring happiness to Fatima is to bring happiness to Allah. This is that Fatima who cried for her beloved son, Imam al Hussein. Yes. And when you weep for Imam al Hussein, you, this is a form of consolation that you are giving to Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra. For Wasala Fatima, you have reached out to her. You have given her consolations. You know, when we have a death within our families or within our communities, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Forbid all that. our family members Inshallah. and friends a long and a healthy life. Inshallah. But do you notice that when a certain individual dies, how we all go as friends or extended family fam family members, we console yes. those who are close to the deceased, the mother, the father, the son, whoever we are who is there, we cry with them, we console them. You know, this consolation, for a person who has lost a beloved one, it gives them, it gives them some form of relief. It does. It, it makes them feel that they are not alone in this. It, it they does. have somebody with them. They have somebody to lean upon them. In the same thinking, in the same line, Sayyidah Fatima Zahra doesn't need us, but we need her. We show out of our love, Ya we Fatima, the whole world was against yes. your son. They killed him in the worst way, but here we are weeping for him. And we console you. Fatima alayhi salam weeps till today for Imam al Hussein. Wow. We have traditions from our sixth Imam alayhi salam that when Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra weeps, from the manner in which she cries, just that sigh of grief, the flames of Jahannam want to leap out of Jahannam. Allah. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends angels to contain the fire, the flames within Jahannam, because they cannot bear to hear the sigh and the weeping of Fatima. This is Fatima alayhi salam. And perhaps she's holding on to her broken rib, weeping for Imam al Hussein. Who is Fatima? What is Fatima? Yeah. To bring happiness to the heart of Fatima alayhi yeah. salam by weeping for Imam al Hussein. Yeah. And this is why they say that they make this pledge that Ya Fatima, because we know how grieved you are over the grief of Imam al Hussein, we're making this pledge that we shall continue to uphold this mm -hmm. dhikr and we shall continue to uphold this memory. And what's, what's also interesting um, and also links the two together is they're making that oath in front of the shrine of Al-Fadl al Abbas alayhi salam. Uh, there's a narration which uh, I would like you to comment on uh, is the link between Fatima al Zahra and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas uh, is where uh, on a day of judgment Umm al banin will raise the shirt, the blooded shirt of Imam al Hussein, and Fatima al Zahra will raise the two hands of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas peace be upon So that link right there where they're making that oath uh, to Fatima al Zahra in front of the shrine 
أبو الفضل عباس عليه السلام 100% we have this tradition that the day of judgment is judgment يعني where those who did right are rewarded those who did good are rewarded and those that have done evil are punished يعني there is a divine courtroom if yeah. you may say the proceedings of the day of judgment begin with Sayyida Fatima Zahra seeking justice for those who severed the arms of Abu al-Fadil. The there is a thing. connection. Wow. This is the first act of divine justice that will be carried out on the wow. day of judgment. The narration mentions she will come with a tasht. Jibreel will say to her when Sayyida Fatima Zahra comes into the mahsha and everybody is told the daughter of the Holy Prophet is coming so lower your heads. They lower their heads. Fatima alayhi salam is coming through the mahshar, surrounded by angels. And she says, Ya Allah, I want you to seek justice for me. Jibrail comes down, he says, do you want justice to be sought for Muhsin? Do you want justice to be sought for the manner in which Ali was killed or Hussein was killed or Hassan was killed? She says, no. She's holding a tasht, a tray that is covered. Jibrail says to her, oh Fatima, for whom do you want to seek justice? Is it against those people who broke your ribs? who slapped you and burnt down your house? She says, no. She removes the cloth from the yeah. tasht and within this tasht are the severed arms of Mawlana Abu al-Fadl. She says, Ya Allah, judge between me and those. between those who severed his arms. Meaning wow. what? Sayyida Fatima Zahra alayha salam is taking responsibility for seeking justice for those who severed the arms of Abu al-Fadl. Wow. You know, there's, there is an incident. See, dreams, sometimes realities that exist out of this world are manifested for us through dreams. Yes. And there is an entire science between yeah. Ru'ya Sadiq and Ru'ya Kadiba, one that is a Bishara, one that is not a Bishara, and so on and so forth. We have, I've heard from our seniors, our teachers within the Hawza, the Asatida, may Allah grant all of them a long and a healthy inshallah, life. Inshallah. This was a narration with, a, or this was an incident that took place with a khatib, a very well-known khatib. From here, Iraq, his maktal is recited every year on the day of Ashura. Ah, Abdul Zahra al kaabi Rahmatullah alayhi. Rahmatullah As you know, he was well known for the recitation of the yes. uh, uh, eulogies. Over Is he the Imam one that written or compiled it? It was compiled. Okay. Um, it was the maktal that he had put together and he used to recite it. What a legacy. L without doubt. And till today, you can imagine the service that he has provided. Millions of people weep on his account. Wow. And you can only imagine the status that he has been granted wow. in the Akhirah. That's a legacy that we see. He performed from. one action, one amal, through whom people weep for Imam al Hussein. Remember Imam al Hussein till God knows when. Wow. And this, in essence, Bain al Qawsain between brackets, this is a lesson for you and I, yes. for all of our respected viewers, that we leave behind some sort of action, some sort of amal through which the legacy of Imam al Hussein will continue way after our deaths. Coming back to this incident, Abdul Zahra al Kaabi, yes. Rahmatullah alayhi, yeah, no, so as you know, he used to recite majalis everywhere. Yes. He used to recite in the Sahan Sharif of Imam al Hussein, yeah. in the Sahan of Abu al Fadil, Bain al Haramain, in the Mukhayyam. Wherever there was masjid, there used to be a time where the ulama used to mention that, uh, you know, before the time of the Ba'athis, during the days of Muharram, on any given day, they would count, there would be at least at least a hundred majalis as are happening in the city of Karbala. Wow. Be it in somebody's house, be it within the different Husseiniyas, be it in the Sahan, here, there. They tallied up all the majalis, a hundred majalis per day. Yani wow. 10 days of Muharram, how many? A thousand. A thousand majalis. Wow. You can imagine all the different dimensions of the messages of, of the, the messages of Imam al Hussein with all their different dimensions and everything. Yeah. Yani the Masjid Azhar has an important role in refining the character of yes, people. Yes. And this a is a tarbiyah. Absolutely, without doubt. And even for the children from a young age, okay, they may not understand everything that is there, but it leaves an effect on their soul. They can link with the ones who are the same age. Absolutely. Science shows us today that the ch mind of a child is sharper by far than the mind of an adult. Yes. They are able to comprehend these meanings. When they see people crying, their fathers, their mothers, their elders, it has a 
uh, effects on their soul. Yes. Coming back to this incident of Abdul Zahra Al Kabi, Rahmatullah Ali Sheikh Abdul Zahra Al Kabi, no, 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 no. one of the days after a majlis, he was reciting the ziyara. And this goes back to the connection between Sayyidatina Sayyidat Sayyidat Al Alameen and Abu Al Fadil. As he was reciting the ziyara, he said, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas, Ya Ibn Fatima Al Zahra. Wow. We don't That's have new. this. We don't have this. Yeah. Yani, the son of Amir al the son of Umul Banin. Yeah. Abu al-Fadil was not from the children Fatima born Sarah, by yeah. Amir al and Sayyidatina Nisa al alami So he realized this mistake and he corrected himself. He said, Yabna Umul um al Banin or Yabna Amir al -Mu'minin. He corrected himself. He recited the ziyara, everything. He went home and he felt within himself, you know, how could I make such a mistake that I said Abbas, the son of Fatima al Zahra? I wish I would not have done this mistake. Oh. He narrates that night, he went to sleep. In his dream, he says, he sees Sayyidatina Nisa al Alameen. And she says to him, O oh, Abdul Zahra, do not belittle the relationship between me and Abbas. Indeed, Abu al-Fadil, yani Abbas is my son. Wow. Yani, we may not see it from that physical perspective, but for the service that Abu al-Fadil gave to Abu Abdullah al Hussein, Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra considers him to be her son. Wow. This shows us the status of Mawlana Abu al-Fadil. And you know, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He inspires us and that He motivates us, all our respected viewers from across the globe who are witnessing this monumental event. Yes. That they are watching this, this legacy being revived, the manifestation of the supplication of the Holy Prophet, that we are inspired, inshallah, to uphold the memory of Imam Al Hussein, uphold the Aza, whichever part of the world in which we are. Inshallah. Whatever we do for Imam Al Hussein, we do mm. with a full heart. If it's attending mm. Majalis, attend with your full heart. If you are attending the Latmiyah, perform the Latam with your full heart. Whatever form of service there mm -hmm. is, we encourage each other. Yes, there are days we're going to work, we're going to school, homework takes a back seat, in work we are tired, we're not as productive. But you know what? In all this tiredness, in all this exhaustion, Habibi Ahmed, there is a sweetness. Yes, there is. And before we continue, Sheikhna, uh, I'm getting a lot of requests uh, from people who uh, couldn't make it to Karbala. And, you know, uh, they're saying, uh, I wish to come to Karbala for the first time uh, from, from, you know, around the world. Um, so, Sheikhna, if you can just give us a minute uh, of, you know, reciting on their behalf uh, to uh, the Holy Shrines right now. I know they just changed the banner. So it's a very blessed moment. And I know for a fact, dua is 100% mustajab and accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this moment. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya Allah, ya Rahman, ya Rahim. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most beneficent, the most merciful. By the sake of Imam al Hussein, by the sake of the trampled body of Imam al Hussein. And by the sake of the severed arms of Abu al-Fadil, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I ask Mawlana Abu al-Fadil that each and every lover of yours in the east of the world and the west of the world who has not had an opportunity to come to Karbala, Ya Abu al-Fadil, you make it easy for them and you provide them the means to come here so that they may pledge allegiance to you. I ask Abu al-Fadil and I ask Imam al hussein because Allah has given them that power and that status to fulfill anyone's dua that all our viewers, lovers of Imam al hussein in the east of the world, in the west of the world, whatever hajat they have, whatever desires that they have, you fulfill them. And that whatever difficulties they may be facing, you provide ease for them and faraj. And I pray, inshallah, under the kubba of Abu al-Fadil and the kubba of Imam al hussein that 
each and every one of these people are granted a chance to come here to Karbala. Inshallah. Those who have come here before, they keep getting a chance to come again and again for every year so long as we are alive. I pray to Allah by the sake of the severed arms of Abu al-Fadil to never distance us from Amen. Karbala so long as we are alive, insha'Allah. Insha'Allah, I mean, very beautiful, Shaykhna. And, and the fact that, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does say to us, uh, through Prophet Muhammad, uh, he says, uh, you know, uh, reach me through the people's, uh, through the people I love and I dear. And, you know, what better way to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than Abu al-Fadl Abbas. Uh, and we hope, inshallah, everyone that can't really come to Karbala, uh, as you mentioned, work, school, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, everyone uh, is, is so busy uh, with the materialistic world uh, that th there's no chance of, uh, of visiting these beautiful shrines. Uh, we hope everyone, inshallah, gets the chance uh, to, uh, you know, to be able to reach Karbala. Uh, now, uh, Sheikhna, we go back to our uh, discussion. Uh, but before we do that, let's go to a short break. I know you're getting very thirsty. Uh, so inshallah, we do remember Muhammad Islam in our thirst, but uh, inshallah, we'll be back uh, after a while. So respective viewers, do stay tuned uh, for we will continue uh, our uh, commemoration of uh, the banner exchange ceremony and our discussion, but after the short break, so do stay tuned. Can one who the heart has stolen be worlds apart from his servant? Can one who the heart has stolen be worlds apart from his servant? Worlds apart, I search for the rock from me to you. Oh, say, what fails and what worlds exist between myself and Jose? Searches for your figure, so to yours I can attend, and yet still worlds apart I stand, even if worlds your love transcends, I wish when you stood there alone. My hand to you, I could extend. Is it fair that I can't serve you? Yet to all of my wounds you turn. I wish when swords upon you pray that my master. Same. And my tears that drip down reshape to write your name all oh, for same. Can he whose love destroys reason be worlds apart from his servant? Can one who the heart Stolen, be worlds apart from his servant. Is it fair that time can stand still when I'm entranced by your mention? Is it fair that time can stand still when I'm entranced by your mention? Yet it won't go back centuries to days of your tribulation. 
Is it fair that time can stand still when I'm entranced by your mention, yet it won't go back centuries to days of your tribulation? Is it fair that you come to me in each hopeless situation, but I cannot return to you when left you there a whole nation and you stood there amongst the dead in your eyes, but death's reflection drawn in your eye the tears that saw on Hussein the world's desertion. Tell me, tell me how the eye that sees this notices me, O oh Hussein. Tell me how the eye that sees this notices me, O oh Hussein. How does the man that walks with death seek life in me, O oh Hussein? Can he whose love times strengthen be worlds apart from his servants? Though time draws us further apart, fires in me you've created. So when my mind recalls your day, I feel your pain on me. I see your day as clear as day within my eye illustrated. I weep upon my hand, my tears, tears and images they fainted as clear. Can see this hand on it with horizon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Hope inshallah, uh, you know, not as much enjoyed, Sheikhna, uh, to use the word, but you know, we have to say enjoyed because honestly, at the comfort of your home, you're getting uh, the opportunity to perform a live ziyara to uh, Hussein alayhi salam. And speaking of live ziyara, uh, my brother and a very good friend of mine. Sinu Sukhni will be on air, inshallah, uh, after midnight uh, with his show. Welcome to Karbala. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a very well opportunity, a very nice opportunity for everyone living abroad uh, to perform a ziyara. He actually uh, goes and people calls and they can perform a ziyara to Hussein alayhi salam and, and, you know, and do, do enjoy this opportunity because, you know, all. The beauty about this, uh, Ahmed, is that. Um, this shows that the lovers of Ahlul Bayt, yeah. your, our bodies could be in different parts of the world. But our hearts. But our hearts reside here. Beautiful. Our hearts live. Beautiful. Our hearts perform tawaf around the haram of Allah. Abu al-Fadil. Our hearts perform tawaf around the haram of Imam al Hussein. Our hearts perform sa'i bayn al haramain Wow. Over here. And this is the reality. Every person who has come to Karbala has left their hearts here. People who have not yet come to Karbala, perhaps whether they realize or they don't realize, they yearn. Their hearts are already in Karbala. Yeah. Yes, their bodies are away. Yeah. And hence, when you tell me about these brothers or these number of brothers who are doing dua and asking for dua to be here, I say to them that you are blessed, your hearts are residing in Karbala. Yeah. And Alhamdulillah, this shows that spiritual connection. Yeah and affiliation that lies between these pure individuals with their Imams. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah wa Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. It is through this blessed channel that you are able to bring the hearts of the people to Karbala. You've blessed it, Shaykhna. When they see the images of the Haram through this, through this uh, blessed channel, you transport their hearts and their souls here. Allah Alhamdulillah. Khalikum. Hopefully we can, you know, through uh, your hard work and dedication, uh, we can get uh, the exact message of uh, out there and you know uh, the oppressions because this month really it's 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 supposed to be a month of uh, you know uh, going back to Allah just like Ramadan uh, but yet it's it's turned into a month of you know sacrifice a month of oppression uh, a month of uh, lamentation as we were talking about before uh, but going uh, back to our discussion uh, there's a lot of questioning that goes around weeping for Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Uh, now, should we and why uh, is it important uh, to weep for Imam Hussain alayhi salam? And is it the only form uh, of uh, reviving the message of Imam Hussain, reviving uh, the commemoration of Imam Hussain alayhi salam? 
Shi, when it comes to reviving the commemoration of Imam al Hussein, we have a number of manners. Yeah. Number of mannerisms through which the grief of Imam al Hussein, the revolution of Imam al Hussein is commemorated. Yes. By far, one of the most important ones is weeping. It's not the only one, but it's a number of different, it is one of many ways mm -hmm. in which the commemoration is upheld. Yes. The revolution is revived. To do with the emotion, which is a prerequisite mm -hmm. to enhancing the intellect. Yes. And it is the weeping that lays the foundation for amal for acting upon the values mm -hmm. for which Imam al Hussein sacrificed his life. Therefore, when you look into this fiqh, and I use the word fiqh in the sense that it is a science to understand. When you look at any given text, for example, fiqh meaning, sorry? Fiqh in terms of jurisprudence, jurisprudence in terms okay. of its literal translation. Yes. But over here, we use it in the terms of science. Okay. The science of understanding the commemoration of Imam al Hussein. We look at the importance that is given to weeping. And I say weeping is a foundation yes. for everything else that is later on going to come. Weeping in essence, you will find that you look for any text of hadith that speaks about Imam al Hussein. Take for example, Kamil al Ziyarat, yes. authored by Ibn Kawlawai, Rahmatullah alayhi. One of the most authentic books that we have in terms of i'tibar. In fact, Ibn Kawlawai himself in the beginning of the text says, Everything that I've narrated in this book, I've narrated from those individuals who are known to be thicker, trustworthy. Ibn Kawlawai, Ali, Jalil, Kabir. Look at the number of narrations that he has compiled in regards to the importance for weeping for Imam al Hussein. This act of weeping, it symbolizes a number of things. Mm -hmm. A number of them, perhaps for the time that we have, I've listed out maybe six or seven. If a person thought about this, he could come about with much more than this yes number one see it is within the sunnah of the aimma and the sunnah of rasulullah yes and the prophets before him you can imagine this is one of the khasais of imam al hussein particularities of imam al hussein that the anbiya from adam to isa wept for imam al hussein even before the tragedy of karbala including nabiullah ibrahim wow. alayhi salam Perhaps in one of the later shows, we are able to go through this tradition Inshallah. in depth. And, and we do have two minutes before the end of the show. Uh, so but for weeping, yeah. as a final message over here, number one, weeping indicates your alliance with Imam al Hussein, And it indicates your resistance and your opposition towards the enemies of Imam al Hussein. Because when you weep, weeping denotes what? It shows your sympathy. Yes. You sympathize with Imam al Hussein. If you sympathize with Imam al Hussein, you are in the camp of Imam al Hussein. Yeah. When you weep for the atrocities that were committed against him, it means that you are denouncing Bani Umayyah for what they did. Of course. Weeping, in essence, is an expression of tawalli and tabarri. In addition to the fact that, ya akhi, at the very base level, it shows humanity. It does. For a person to be indifferent, to atrocities such as this in Karbala. If a person is indifferent to this, tell me what, what aspect of humanity exists within him? Nothing. I don't find any. At the very basic level, weeping denotes the humanity that exists within us. Yes. At another level, it is an expression of tawalli, that you are on the side of Imam al Hussein, and it shows that you are in opposition, tabarri against Bani Umayyah mm -hmm. and every other party that has tried to attack Imam al Hussein or any one of the Ahlul Bayt. Yes. Sheikh, I would like to thank you very much. I know we don't have time and mashallah, uh, you have uh, prepared for us a lot tonight. Uh, but inshallah, we continue this. Uh, but on the sixth day uh, of Ashura, which uh, is the seventh night, I believe, uh, of Muharram, uh, inshallah, we will come back with uh, Sheikh Abbas Panju, although uh, tomorrow uh, and the days uh, leading uh, to the sixth uh, day of Ashura or Muharram, uh, we will have a special uh, or special nights in Muharram, inshallah. Special guests uh, joining us from Skype uh, as well as over the phone. So do stay tuned for that uh, and do stay tuned for the upcoming shows with Sheikh Abbas Manchu. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Sheikh, thank you very much, respected viewers, for joining us tonight. Hopefully, inshallah, uh, we can learn uh, from these nights how to be characterized 
uh, with the acts given or with the lessons provided from Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Once again, thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So far from home A place where angels cry While innocent children die Hussein has said goodbye Praying some of them survive Torture and the heat They can't bear to watch him They cry to shine.